Hey, John Cristani here, and I'm gonna be going over digital decluttering because I'm a former very messy, unfocused person who's at times gotten overwhelmed by just the amount of work or the amount of things I do as an entrepreneur, an influencer, a product owner, TV personality, all of these things led my life to be very unfocused when I'm doing my work on the internet. Being able to get rid of the digital clutter on my phone, within my email, and within my social media accounts, and also just knowing where all my passwords as have been really important to me. Now, in this video, I'm gonna be going over a few important things and I'm gonna be taking you on my computer and kind of into my life in some of these areas to really show you how I've been able to declutter my life that's allowed me to get, get more focused, spend more time with my family, and just be more productive in business. In particular, phone notifications, getting rid of clutter and advertisements in the email, and I'm gonna be taking you into my computer and showing you some of the advanced filters and some of the advanced features of Gmail that I use. They're really secrets that really nobody, very few people know about. Social media, I'm gonna show you how to get rid of all that useless information and getting rid of forgotten passwords. This is gonna save you a lot of time, folks, whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're just a busy person who doesn't need all the clutter in your life. So let's go into digital decluttering. Now the first thing I recommend you do to declutter your digital life is actually turn off all phone notifications. Now this is very easy to do. If you're on an iPhone, you can also set your phone to do not disturb mode during the day. Again, an important frame of reference that you need to think about, are you reacting to your phone or is your phone reacting to you? Is it a tool for you to use or are you a tool for your phone to use? And many people have it completely flipped around. They are working for their phone rather than their phone working for them. Think about it. The more time they get you to spend on their phone, again, they're desperate. They're, they're like a bad, needy girlfriend that's just trying to get you back. Come back to me, spend more time with me. Because the more time you spend on that screen, the more money the tech companies make from you. Now the easiest thing is turn off all notifications. It's very easy to do on iPhones. You go to your settings tab and you will basically go to the notifications and then you just individually turn every one of the notifications off. This will take a few minutes, but it will drastically improve the quality of your life, guaranteed. If you've done this and if you had good results, type in, say it works great, it's made my life better. If turning off notifications on your phone hasn't helped your life, let me know in the comments. <laughs> Android devices, it's about the same process. You wanna go to settings, and then you're gonna go to notifications, and you're gonna turn all of your notifications off. Now, I sort of went to an extreme with decluttering my digital phone life, and I actually got rid of my smartphone, and I got a dumb phone, and this phone doesn't even have internet, it doesn't have any, you know, any social media, any websites, any notifications, nothing whatsoever. And I also keep the ringer and the buzzer off on this at all times. So the only time I'm using my phone is when I want to use my phone and check missed calls, check messages, call people, etc. Now, this has been a bit hard, admittedly. I especially miss Google Maps. Driving around, sometimes I'll make a wrong turn or I'll want to go to some other location and not having Google Maps has been kind of hard, but overall, I'd say having a dumb phone has had a very net positive effect on my life and my focus and my ability to have great personal connections with others. So we got rid of notifications. Hopefully your life's a little better. Now, the next steps I'm gonna show on my computer, but inside of your email, I'm gonna show some advanced filters I use to get rid of clutter, to get rid of advertisements. I'm also gonna show how to get rid of useless information and useless newsfeed stuff on social media, as well as how not to forget passwords. So let's go right over to my computer and let's get into it. Now the first step I recommend you do to decluttering your email is pretty simple. It's unsubscribing from a bunch. Now every week I actually go through and I work on unsubscribing from a few emails. I don't know how it happens. There's just 
so many email lists out there. I think it's just a good practice to go to your promotions folder, go to your updates tab, and just go through things and start unsubscribing, okay? Google makes it easy to unsubscribe. You can, you know, in here, just manage your subscriptions. There's always a place to actually unsubscribe from emails and it doesn't take too much time. Oh man, if, look how many email lists there are nowadays. It's just like they just keep adding you to different email lists. And I'll just, I'll just click through and I'll find more ways to keep unsubscribing, right? From you flowers, again, unsubscribe. And I am relentless about unsubscribing. If it is not an email that serves me, right now, I just keep unsubscribing from emails because for me, if I have less things to focus on, the better. And I'd say it just helps clarity of mind. You want, if you're not being served by every email that is coming to you, you're cluttering up your mind, you're cluttering up your focus, and especially if you are an entrepreneur, it just doesn't make sense. Spend 30 minutes a week and your inbox will be much better and your life will thank you for it. The next step is advanced filters in Gmail. Now, one thing you may not know about how Gmail works is that if you are using Gmail, which I highly recommend you use, it is free, you can do a number of things with your emails. So let's say your name is Bob Smith, okay? And your email is bob.smith at gmail.com. What you can do is you can actually add any number of dots anywhere in your email and it will still, when people send you emails, it will still go to the same email. Another interesting thing that you can do with Gmail is you can actually add a plus icon after your email signature or after your email name and say plus, Let's just use an affiliate network that I use, Jumbleberry. And what will happen is that Gmail, when people send you emails, they everything, the plus, and everything beyond the plus is ignored. Now you might be thinking, John, why is this helpful? Well, the reason this is helpful, and this is, this is actually a tip I got from Elon Musk, who does a lot of advanced filters in Gmail, is that you are able to set a filter and say, okay, anybody who sends an email to Bob Smith plus Jumbleberry, remove. Let me show you this in practice. So when you're in Gmail, you wanna go up to this little icon right up in the upper right, okay? It's, a, it's the gears icon, also known as the settings icon. And that icon is where we're gonna be doing a lot of our stuff. So we click settings and then what we wanna click is we wanna click see all settings. This is gonna help, this is where we're gonna be doing all of the cool stuff. So we click see all settings and what we're most interested in going to is this area right here, which is called filters and blocked addresses. And I'm gonna go over a few other advanced things since we're on my computer uh, that I didn't talk about previously. So stay tuned, watch the whole video, and you'll see some bonus tips here. Now what you'll see here is I have a lot of filters set up for different folks, uh, for all sorts of different emails, because what I realized is even if I unsubscribed from some email list, I still continue to get emails somehow associated with from whatever I originally subscribed to. And who here has done this, has noticed that before too, where you've unsubscribed from an email list, yet they somehow still continue to actually send you emails. It's crazy, right? So let me show you a few ways around that that work really good. Now, as you see, I have an absolute mountain of filters here. I have an absolute ton of blocked email addresses in here. And, but to create a new filter, you wanna go down towards the bottom and you're going to go to here, which is create new filter, okay? See that right there. Now, the other way to do this is you can actually just, in, inside of your inbox, you can just click this drop down button right up here. It's right, you know, in the search mail area. You just click that drop down button and again, you can create a filter from there. But let's just go back and I'll show you from within the filters area. 
Now, if I subscribe to an email list, whenever I subscribe to email lists, I put the plus icon behind my name. Okay, and the reason I do this is because I want every email identified with a service. Am I doing it using Netflix? I do my email plus Netflix at Gmail. Or if I subscribe to, um, you know, AT&T Cable, I, again, put that behind my name. And if I want to stop receiving emails from them, I put that any emails that are sent to a particular address, I just say, don't send me any more emails. Any emails going to this are going to be blocked. So let me show you what I do to set it up. So I'll say create filter. And then what I'll choose to do is I'll say skip the inbox, mark as red, and also apply filter to all the matching conversations. Now the benefit of skipping the inbox is that it's not gone forever, it's just archived. So if you really need to see the particular notification or whatnot, you can still see it uh, if you search for it in your email, but you don't need to have your day cluttered by it. You don't have, need to have those notifications come up. And also it'll be marked as red. So you don't have, again, getting closer, working on getting to inbox zero, where you have zero unread messages is a good thing I've heard, but I haven't done it. And I also always apply it to all matching conversations, just so I don't have to scroll through and find all these emails that may have been important. And then I'll just say create filter. What you can see is going back to the filters and blocked addresses area. If we scroll down, we see that the last filter I set up is any emails that are to that particular email will be skipped in the inbox and marked as red. And you can see that right there. This works amazingly. Okay. Now you might be wondering what if you don't have, what if you didn't start applying to email lists with this methodology in place? Well, great. There's another solution for that. What we do is we can actually go in here and look for emails from people. And we're going to use something called regx. Now regx is a type of coding language that is meant for text, but don't worry. You're only have to going to have to do one symbol, but you're actually going to get into coding right here by watching this video. So how to set this sort of filter up is we're going to go to emails that are from a particular person and we'll type in the star or the asterisk, uh, the asterisk symbol. And we'll say any emails from, let's say jumbleberry.com will, we'll, we'll create a filter here. And what we see is it has 15 matching conversations. So what this filter does is it says any emails from any email address associated with jumbleberry.com. Now, the reason why this is great is because lots of times when people put you on email lists, they have multiple emails. So they'll send from support at jumbleberry. They'll send from uh, they'll send from Becky at Jumbleberry. They'll send from John at Jumbleberry and they'll rotate the email addresses so that even if you unsubscribe from one of their lists, they're able to send you an email from one of the other addresses and they just keep doing this so that you can never get off of their list. This is, and I'm not saying Jumbleberry does this, but I, 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 I'm just using them as an example. It's a great affiliate network. I suggest you join. Um, I've made a lot of money with them, but this will make sure that any emails from Jumbleberry are attributed for. This is fantastic. And then what you do is you want to make sure that you, you know, whatever, maybe you mark it as important, or maybe we're just going to say, never mark this as important. And we're going to also apply this to all matching conversations. Then we simply create the filter. And what this will do is this will make sure that all of these emails are taken care of moving forward into the future. I've done this so many times, you have no idea. And this has made my inbox much, much, much easier to deal with. And I, I, I hope this helps. If this, if this helps, type in hoorah!
in the chat below and I'm gonna go into how I've been able to declutter myself from social media and also passwords. Now the tips to decluttering your social media are pretty simple at its, uh, at its base level and that is just don't use it, okay? Or only use it if absolutely necessary. I actually prefer not to use social media and the easiest thing was once I got rid of my phone, once I get rid of my smartphone and exchange it for a dumb phone, my social media usage dwindled down an amazing amount and I just found that most of my social media usage was on my phone. So getting rid of the phone just helped enormously. I don't really use social media much anymore unless I'm using it as a way to post content to other people. Again, I'd rather have the, the mo important mindset shift that you have to understand if you want to become successful in life, whether it's in your relationships or in your business or whatnot, is you'd rather be having others react to you rather than you constantly reacting to others. Are you living your life? Are you designing how you use your time or are others determining that for you? Think about that. Social media is a perfect case in point here. Just don't use it unless, unless you're using it for business purposes. And that's what I do. I post often on my social media accounts. Um, I actually have others post for me. And you know, that's, that's how I use social media. So I would encourage you just don't use it. Uh, but if you have to use it, uh, if it's really important to you, I would encourage you to just unsubscribe from posts frequently and regularly. Just hide, hide, hide. Just hide as much stuff as you possibly can that you don't need. I prefer not seeing anything on my social media unless it's maybe an important message from somebody. Every now and then I check my messages. Really, I do it maybe once a month. So just don't use it as the rule here. Passwords, this is a shameless plug. I don't, I'm not sponsored by this company in any ways. I'm just a really big fan of, uh, of this company actually. And that is, that is called LastPass. Okay, LastPass has been absolutely amazing for uh, saving and storing all my passwords and only really requiring one password to get in. So I love LastPass. I think it's fantastic and uh, it's really easy to use. So I highly suggest you, uh, you check it out. Um, it's just, it's free. It's free to sign up for. Uh, if you're using it personally, you can see that right here. It's just completely free, okay? Uh, you don't even need you don't you don't need to get any of the premium stuff. I am on the premium stuff because I have a you know a business and but just use it free and it's fantastic. The other the other uh, trick I use is I have a USB drive from a government in, like a government contractor. It's like this super crazy whiz gig encrypted unhackable technology. The company I use for uh, my really my backups of all my passwords is this company Apricorn. They're a US government contractor. As you see, they have like a ton of, just a ton of awards and all this stuff. They work with the US government. And I use this device right here. Um, as you see in the picture, works really well. Hardware encrypted, which means that hackers can't break it. It's, it's unless they actually have their fingers on the actual on the actual USB drive, and they're somehow able to understand your code. It's, it's, ac it's a totally amazing um, device. It's really secure, and it's helped me out a lot. I use, again, I use the uh, a Aegis Secure Key 3, and I keep a back backup of all my passwords on it. Nobody's been able to get in. Even if I lose it, I'm not worried that anybody will ever be able to guess. Uh, my password, my passcode there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something, especially about Gmail filters and advanced ways of using them so that your inbox can get more decluttered. I look forward to, uh, I hope I helped some of you. Make sure to just spank that like button a few times for me if you, you know, to help me support this channel and also make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you got something from this, type in hoorah in the comments below. See ya, bye.